So part one of this lab is to add an additional LED to the board. So as you can see here, there's now four LEDs on the board with resistors. Again, in this circuit diagram, the LEDs are shown as an active low connection. How do I know they're an active low? Well, the LEDs are connected to the 5 volt rail. In order for the lights to come on, that means I must provide a low signal from the Arduino in order for the lights to come on. Again, you could wire the lights as an active high, which means that when you give it a high signal, the light comes on. You can accomplish this by simply connecting the LEDs to ground rather than connecting them to 5 volts. This would then change the logic and make active high instead of active low. For the first part of the lab, after you've after you've modified your breadboard, another thing to note is you don't need to remove the additional switch that you added to the to the last lab that can stay on the board as well as it can stay connected to pin 2 of the Arduino. You just simply won't be using it for this lab. The next part of the lab is doing a serial print statement. So we're going to print to the serial monitor of the Arduino. What we're going to do is we're basically going to do a miles to kilometer conversion. So you're going to have to use the serial.available, serial.printf, and serial.parseFloat functions. Now, serial.printf we use for writing text to the screen, so all the stuff you see in the window here is all done using serial.printf. Serial.available we use for actually getting input from the user and manipulating that inside the code, and serial.parseFloat basically goes through that buffer of serial data. So serial.available puts all that data into a buffer or basically into a series of, of numbers. And then the serial.parse float function, we actually pull those numbers out one at a time and can actually then do data, do manipulations with them. All right, so let's look at some of the code that's involved for lab three, part one. So in part one, what we're doing is we're writing code that's going to print data to the serial monitor window. What kind of data? Well, it's going to be text data that gives the user's instructions in order to do miles to kilometer conversion. So we're going to ask the user to input some distance in miles, and then our computer program is going to convert that to kilometers and then print the answer back to the user. If we take a look at the code here, so if you notice at the top of my code, I have defines for my LEDs. Now, why defines are a good idea is it makes my code much more manageable and much more maintainable. So if for whatever reason in the future I decide to move my LEDs to a different pin location, all I need to do is change these pin numbers here and then all my code will work and I just need to recompile it as long as the LEDs are at that physical location. I don't need to go through my code everywhere and change all these different uh, names. So in this case LED 0 or D0 is on pin 4, D1 is on pin 5, D2 is on pin 6, D3 is on pin 7. And all through my code I use these same defines so that I can actually manipulate those LEDs without having to use the pin names directly. Now if we take a look at my void setup here, the first thing you'll note is serial.begin. So what this is doing is this is opening up the COM port on my Arduino so that I can actually have a communication channel between my Arduino and my computer. So it's opening up a communication port between my Arduino and the computer, and it's at a 9600 baud rate. The next thing that we see is I have my four connections for my LEDs set to output. Now, why am I setting them to an output if I don't need them for this portion of the lab? Well, it's very important that because we have hardware connected to the Arduino, that we put it into a known state. The only way we can do that is by making an output because we can never control an input all we can do is read it so we don't want the LEDs to be on or have them damaged and we also don't want to damage the Arduino so the easiest way for us to control what state the LEDs are in is to make an output because we can choose what happens to an output and then if we look at the very next line of code here I turn all my LEDs off now how do I know I'm shutting them off? Well, my LEDs are specifically configured as an active high, which means a high turns them on and makes light come out of the LEDs. In this case, I'm writing a low to each LED, which is going to shut it off. Now, if we take a look at the code in void loop here, we'll notice a few things. I have two variables at the top, float miles and float kilometers. What these are going to be used for are variables for getting the user input and returning the converted value back and 
displaying it to the user. I also have several print statements here, which are basically instructions to the user. They tell the user what the purpose of the program is and what they're supposed to enter. The last thing that we have that I'm going to talk about is this while serial.available statement. So if you take a look at this line of code here, this says while bracket serial.available open bracket close bracket is equal to null close bracket semicolon. So what this is saying is is that as long as the serial.available function is returning null or is equal to null. So what this sub function does here, serial.available, it returns data from the serial monitor that the user enters with the keyboard. As long as that data coming back is null, so this is very important definition, it is null not zero. So if we take a look over here at the ASCII table. So the ASCII table is what we use to go between characters and numbers. Since really, realistically, everything to the computer is just a number, we need some way of interpreting those numbers when we're entering in data or when we're using a keyboard. For instance, if we take a look at this chart, space is decimal 32 or hex character 20. The number 0, for instance, is decimal 48 or hex 30. So each single character that you can enter in on the keyboard has a specific number associated with it. So when we take a look at this code here and we're testing it against 0, we're actually not testing it against the character 0, we're testing it against the number 0, which in this case is null when we're referring to ASCII characters or any character that we enter in on the keyboard. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. So if I open up my serial monitor, the user is prompted with what this program does. So it's a mile to kilometer conversion program. They're told to enter a distance in miles, floating point stand format. So that's 13.24 as the example. And then the converted, and the converted distance will be displayed once you enter it in. So let's enter in 13.24. And then the program calculates 13.24 miles and tells us that's 21.308 kilometers and then ask the user for another input. And this is how your program should function. I'll leave it up to you to determine how you parse the serial.available input as well as how you deal with the actual math manipulation and return the value to the user.